This is a quick video to show you how you can make hand painted game assets. So I'm going to make these barrels and I would say this is an intermediate level tutorial. Okay, so let's start by creating a barrel. I'll delete the main cube, shift A to add and I'm adding a cylinder. I'm going to reduce the vertices down here to 8 and zoom in with the full stop key. Now if I go into edit mode with tab, I can reshape this and create a barrel. So first I'll do two loop cuts with Control R and use the wheel mouse to increase the loops and place them there. Now I'll scale these in the Z, so S then Z to about there and create two more loop cuts with Control R and the wheel mouse. Insert those and scale them in the Z axis to about here. I'll grab this loop, this loop and this loop and this loop. That's with Shift and Alt. Alt will grab a loop cut and Shift Alt will grab another loop cut like that. And I'm going to scale those outwards by pressing S. So these are going to be my metal hoops that hold the wood together. Let's go to face mode by Shift Tab, face mode. Now if I select the line in between the two faces and press Alt right click, it will select a face loop. Extrude this by pressing E and then right clicking. So I've got an extrusion there and then I'm going to scale it but I'm going to press Shift Z so it doesn't do it in the Z axis so it just goes out in the X and Y axis like that. Do the same with this, Alt right click, extrude, right click to set the extrusion, scale, Shift Z so it doesn't go in the Z axis. And then at the top here, this top face, I'm going to delete it, delete face by pressing delete and I'm going to grab the edges, two edges here and press F to fill the faces and those two edges fill faces and those two edges and fill faces with F. That's so we have a slightly better topology at the top. It's not good practice to use N-gons. So let's go to face mode and select these three, extrude, right click and scale inwards, extrude and constraint to the Z axis by pressing Z and pull it downwards. I'm not going to worry about the bottom with the extrusions but I'll just tidy it up with the topology. Okay so there's our basic barrel. Now what I need to do is unwrap. Now really I should be marking the seams and making a nice tidy unwrap if this was going to be a game object but for now and the sake of speed in the tutorial I'm just going to do a smart UV project. If you want to see other tutorials about unwrapping and marking seams click on the card in the corner. So Smart UV Project, increase the island margin and press OK. Let's bring out the UV image editor, so pull out this, go to the UV image editor and down here will be our node editor and change over to cycles now and change this to the node editor. There we go and click new. If you have used nodes make sure you tick it. So here's my texture, it's not particularly well unwrapped but like I say it will do for now. So in order to paint I need to create a new texture so click on new down here and we'll call this barrel color 2 for my sake because I've done this before and I would suggest doing it 2048 by 2048 and you may as well fill it in with a brown base color something like that. We're almost there we just need to add our texture into the node editor so if I press shift A to add texture image texture bring it in and my texture which is called barrel color 2 should be there in blender's memory so I can press the double arrows here I'll just zoom in so you can see that easier just there and you don't have to hook it up if you select it when you go to paint mode because it's selected it will come up but I think it's a good idea just to join it up now now let's quickly test it that's working Control Z to undo and we can start painting what you must make sure is when you make any changes you save your image down here so image, save as image. So here's a time lapse of me painting. If you hold down S, you can sample your colors, as you can see I'm doing here. Press F to resize your brush. If you click on this button, you can select faces with right click and only then paint on those faces. So I start with big sort of blob colors just to add variation. Then I make my brush smaller and start filling in the sort of stripes of the wood grain. 
All the time I haven't got my metal loops selected, so I'm just painting on the wood bits. And I keep changing the colours and adding variation. So start by putting down basic base colours to start with. Also change the tone slightly, so you've got dark bits of grain and lighter bits of grain. I suggest you save your image regularly as well. Now I'm putting down a base colour for the metal. Again, slightly dark and slightly light tones with a bit of a bluey tinge for the silver. I don't worry too much about the bottom. And now I'm going to the detail with a dark brush. I haven't gone all the way black. This may be a tiny bit too dark. but you need to leave a bit of room in case you need to use that extreme black. But apparently it's good practice not to go that extreme because it's just not natural. Even though this is a very cartoony looking game object. Now where those dents are, I'm adding highlights around them as if the wood's sort of warping outward slightly and slight highlights at the top. And you can see now I've built up quite a few samples. So you hold down S and left click to collect samples. And then you can just click on the samples to use them. So I'm just slowly building up the detail adding in the odd knot and swirl in the wood grain texture. And filling in highlights and crevices. Again, save your work regularly. Now I'm putting a few dents in the metal. Now I'm setting up three brushes, one with the screen mode, one with multiply mode, and one normal one. The screen brush lightens the image, as you can see here. The multiply darkens the image. But it uses your color that you've got selected, so it shouldn't destroy the textures or the colors you've already put down. So I'm using the multiply brush just to fill in crevices and add some fake ambient occlusion. I've also got a texture mask on, which you can see on the left hand side, which is just the noise texture, so my brush isn't so uniform. Build this up in layers, so bring the strength right down and do the big parts, and then bring up the strength when you're doing the minor details. Using the screen brush here, with that same texture mask on. When you're using the screen brush, your tone needs to be light, and when you're using the multiply brush, your tone needs to be dark.
Occasionally I come across some errors and I just use the smear brush and smear them out. It's like the smudge brush in Photoshop. Now right at the end, adding in that finer detail with the multiply brush still. I'm a tiny bit out of practice with hand painting, so it, the workflow took me a while. And it was a few hours in total for the whole project. Here I'm adding some rivets. And that's just a black circle with the, a dark mix brush. And then I find a light brush for the highlight rivet in the middle. And there we have it, the finished piece with some hand painted mud and hand painted grass textures. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know in the comments of anything that you'd like me to go through or if you have a different workflow or if you've got any advice for me or just general questions. I do try and respond to all comments. Thanks for watching.